All right, beautiful people. I am back. Let's hope that I'm not frozen. And we can have some dialogue. Mm -hmm. So, as I was saying earlier, welcome to the series. Real talk, real questions. Inside the mind of a gay woman living in Bermuda. I, I'm committed to giving people an opportunity to ask questions and have some real talk about what living a gay life in this country is like, for me at least. Um, some people have been reluctant to come on and, and ask questions and have actually sent me questions via a different medium. And that's fine too, but I would prefer people to, to ask questions in this medium. But nonetheless, as I say all the time, share with your followers so that we can get as many people as we can inside of this dialogue. So today's topic is an interesting one because it stems from a conversation that I, that I was having with someone in town recently, uh, town being Bermuda, the city of Hamilton. Uh, as you may or may not know that I recently did an interview on on a show called Real Talk with Carla Sewell. And in that show, that show is now currently airing in Bermuda on Channel 82, if you get a chance to see it. But when I did the interview, I had on a bow tie and a jacket and, you know, I was doing me how I how I feel comfortable. I often wear my bow ties. I don't have one on today because it's very casual and rainy. So this this guy, I'm, this lady comes up to me and says, oh, you just want to be a man. And I, I thought to myself, okay, I accept that question because it is it is often said, I often hear people say that about um, mm. gay women like myself who dress um, more masculine. I don't think I look particularly masculine when I dress, but I, I get it. You have the short hair, you have on a bow tie, you have on a suit, you have on really nice socks. So I get how people can get confused as to what your sexual orientation is and what your sexual preference is and what your uh, your outward appearance suggests. Well, let me dispel all that once and for all. I do not know or, ha or have I ever desired to be a man. I have no desire to be a man. I am happy being a woman. I love being a woman. I like having boobs. I'm okay with that. I have no, and let's keep it real because this is real talk, okay? I have no desire to have a penis, none whatsoever. Don't want one. Don't have penis at me. So I'm going to see if anybody's brave enough to ask the question. Because I'm not going to come out and have that discussion unless someone is brave enough to ask the question that I know is probably going to all of you's mind right now. But I don't want to be a man. I am not with women because I feel I'm a man inside. That's transgender people. They feel that there's somebody different inside and they try to get their outside to match what they feel inside. That is not the case with me. I am just a gay woman. I am a woman who loves other women. Now, my preference in women, the type of women that I'm generally attracted to, are feminine women. Yeah, but I've dated some women who might be considered masculine, and I haven't had any problems with 
that, but that's generally not my preference. And so I know this is where it gets confusing because some people might say, well, why are you dating only feminine women? Well, because everybody has a preference. Everybody has a taste. I like women who are feminine. I like women who wear makeup. I, I like women who like to wear fishnet stockings. Okay? That is my preference. I don't like women who necessarily dress in dance clothes. That's my preference. Everybody has a preference, but don't confuse the preference with what my sexual orientation is. Don't confuse the preference with how I identify. Because the two are not the same. And I can also categorically tell you this, that I would go as far as to say, in fact, I know that just because a person has an outer appearance that oh might give God. you the impression that they're masculine and inclined does not mean that that is how they are in the bedroom. There are different things, right? And this is where dialogue is important. This is where education and understanding is important. We have to learn to understand that people outside of their sexual orientation are human beings with likes and dislikes. Nobody would suggest that a heterosexual man who dates a rough looking woman is really gay, that he really likes a man, they just say, hey, that's just his preference. So, I am a gay woman who prefers man's clothing because I have a fascination that I've always had with bow ties. I have a fascination and a comfort with man's clothing. And so that is what I wear. Because I dress to please myself and for my own comfort. But I am not attracted to other women that wear man's clothing sexually. Though I relate to them because of our commonality, though I, I would look at another woman in a boat or a suit tie and say, hey, that looks tight. But I'm not attracted to them. Mm -hmm. And there are women who dress like mm -hmm. me, who are attracted to women who dress like me. But there are also women that dress feminine, called femmes, who are attracted to other femmes. So you see, sexual orientation doesn't have anything to do with your preferences, what you're attracted to. I had this conversation with a colleague of mine when he says, oh yes, it has everything. I said, no. Just like you prefer to date only women with big asses, only women with big asses, you would never date uh, a, a woman with a small ass or no ass doesn't say anything about your sexual orientation. All it says, all it speaks to is what mm -hmm. you like, what's your preference, what you're attracted to.
So, I think people need to open up their mind and not be limited. Because also, there is this, this thought that because I dress like a man, I want to be a man, that I'm aggressive. And most people that know me know that I'm not really aggressive at all. I'm very even-tempered. I'm assertive. I'm passionate. But I don't think anybody would say I'm aggressive. So, that's something to think about. So I'm going to leave it there for now because I'm I'm headed inside the House of Labor to uh, meet with one of our, our, our members. And we'll talk about what that looks like. What living an outlife within the union environment looks like. So, I'm out of here, people. Peace.